Hey guys, it's that dividend guy coming at you with another Robinhood portfolio update. So today we're going to go over the overall portfolio performance. We're going to go over the buying power, where that money went, as well as a change that I made in the portfolio. First off, let's take a look at the one day chart. We are down about $250 for the week. We are up $205 for the month. We are down $3,300. For the three-month mark, we are down 6,600, so down about 12% on the three-month mark. Then for the year, we are up around 4,100, right around $4,000, up about 9.5% this past year. So this is awesome. You can see we were all the way up to 54K, and we've been all the way down since the March lows. I believe, where's the March lows at? There we go. So there we are. Lowest we were at is 42.70, so, or 42.5. So, as you guys can see, a lot of fluctuation in the market, especially in the past few months, but all time, guys, we're still up over $12,000 or a almost 35% return. So, I'm not super worried about it. I love my positions, especially the one that I just jumped into, and I will explain that to you in just a second. Starting us off, we've got Realty Income. Sitting at right about... Well, sixty nine fifty. So just a little bit over my average cost, which is fine. I won't be adding any to this position as of right now. But we have 141 shares, around $9,800 worth of market value. Average cost is $67.17. 21% of the portfolio is in realty income. Up $30 today, up almost 330 up 3.5% with a dividend coming in of thirty-four ninety. Love this company. It is my favorite real estate stock. I just don't like it at these prices. I want to see it come down closer to that 67 even dollar range. But I'm happy, you know, collecting that around $35 a month dividend every single month getting those historical increases that we've been getting. Uh, they usually bump it up every quarter. So not worried about it at all. This is one of those just sit and let it compound, right? So just let the tree grow and let the seeds fall. That's all I'm doing here. Next up, we've got Altria. We've got 300 shares, $12,300 of market value. Average cost is right around 48 bucks a share. Around 26.4% of the portfolio is in Altria. Today, we're down $150. Total, we are down almost $1,900, down almost 14%, which means it is a screaming buy for me, and I will be um, putting the money into Altria from their dividend if it stays at these levels. The dividend's not paid until the 11th, but I would love to cost down average if possible, unless there is a stock that I find that I like more. But as of right now, guys, we are down significantly, so this, I think, would be the smartest place to put the money unless there's another position that I find. But a dividend, still even with the downturn for the stock, the dividend is still coming in. Like clockwork, over $250 in there at 270 on the 11th of July. So I will be getting a nice bump up in pay in about a week. So love that. Even though the stock is down pretty significantly, the dividend is still coming. Next, we've got Coca-Cola. I have 2.3 shares. I'll explain why. Robinhood gave me a gift stock of like x amount of dollars and that just boosted my position to about 2.3 shares that is also where that extra buying power went in because i just figured why not i just added it so i'm at about 2.3 shares of coca-cola market value is 146 average cost is 62.73.31 percent of the portfolio is in coca-cola Today, we are up 50 cents total. We're up $1.80, up 1.25%. And Coca-Cola paid their $0.44 cent dividend already. Then we've got Abvi. 85 shares. It's sitting at thirteen, right around $13,000 of market value. Average cost is right around $87 bucks a share. 27.5% of the portfolio is in Abvi. Today, we are down 100, around $200. Bucks. Um, total, we are up 5400 up 73.71%. And I love AbbVie. It is the best return, return on a stock I have ever had. I'm super happy that I could see the long-term potential in this stock. And then next, we've got the big change. So I did have AT&T, but I decided to swap it out because I found a really good deal in the market. And that is Cracker Barrel. So right now, it's sitting at $86.24. It pays a dividend of $1.30. So 
currently uh, between the two being AT&T and Cracker Barrel, they pay the same month. The, the issue was the $270 in dividends that I'd received from Altria. I couldn't put into AT&T and grow that because the dividend it goes ex-dividend date on the 11th, which is the day that Altria pays. But Cracker Barrel goes ex-dividend on the 14th. So I can add that dividend from Altria to the Cracker Barrel uh to the Cracker Barrel position. And on top of that, this to me looks like an AbV part two. Let's take a look. I've got 12 shares, $1,000 of market value. So all I did was take that money from AT&T and put it in what I think is a better option in Cracker Barrel currently. $85 is our average cost. 2% of the portfolio is in Cracker Barrel. Today we're up six bucks. Total we're up six bucks. I just switched the investment today. Now let me show you guys exactly why I decided to do this. One, it's 52-week high is $150. Currently, it is near its 52-week low of 81, so it's a $5 difference. So it's a great value right now with a upside of nearly $1,000. So the way I calculated it right now, I put in $1,000. The upside to 150, which is its 52-week high, is around 1000 bucks. So I put in 1000 I make 1000 but until I wait, I get a dollar thirty in dividends every single month that it pays, and it mirrors AT&T's payout time. So at the same time, so they pay out at the exact same month. So right now, Cracker Barrel is sitting at a value of what, um, comparatively, um, for the ratio of what it pays, AT&T would have to be around seventeen dollars a share to be equal to what Cracker Barrel pays me at eighty six. So until it gets to about ninety seven dollars a share AT&T at the current price would make sense so for what it pays AT&T would have to drop down to equal the same value per dollar that Cracker Barrel is giving me currently so I have a massive upside which we saw with AbbVie it went back up to 150 so while I'm waiting I can just collect that dollar 30 dividend and just let it compound so I'm going to be putting if, if it stays at this price I'm going or around but well, below 96 bucks a share I will be putting that money towards Cracker Barrel, that 270 um, if it stays. If not, I'll be re repurchasing um, Altria shares with its own dividend. So I don't have an issue going back and putting it back into Altria. That is if this Cracker Barrel situation doesn't or gets gets worse for me, right? If it jumps 10 bucks within the next week, then I will switch it back to AT&T. And that's the thing, guys. This is as long, I'm going to hold this position as long as it makes sense. So I, I like Cracker Barrel as a business. I did a bunch of research in the past couple of days because I saw it in the market and I wasn't 100% sure because of the dividend cuts that it had during the um, the pandemic. But I like it now. I like what the management has said. I like the long-term plan for the company. So I'm not worried about this investment at all. And if the value is no longer there, if let's say it materializes in a week, then I'll switch back to AT&T. If the value gets to 96 bucks, then AT&T at $21 to me is a great value. But it was just a better value proposition for my money currently to be in Cracker Barrel than in AT&T. It's nothing on that company. In fact, I love the company still, and I I honestly suspect it'll be back in the portfolio eventually, but I just saw this, this um, price discrepancy, and I did the value calculations based on my you know, my guesstimates on what I think the revenue could do um, and what potential I see in the business and how much of a payoff I could get. So I'm seeing about a thousand dollars, like nine hundred and thirty dollar upside on this position right now with the thousand dollars I have in. If I add anything else, that upside is just going to go up if the stock stays at the current or around the current level. So that's, that's the switch that I did. I've switched out AT&T. Nothing wrong with the business. I love it. But um. I just think Cracker Barrel right now for my money is a better deal and it could compound more into next month at current levels. Next, we've got Aflac. We've got $180 of this insurance company, $10,000 worth of market value. Average cost is around 61 bucks a share, 2.2 or 20, sorry, 21.5% of the portfolio is in Aflac. Sorry, um, Facebook's going on, going nuts. But today's return is seventy-five sixty total. We are down around nine hundred bucks, down about eight percent. Not super worried about it. Next, we've got Walgreens, which is also a value. Fifteen shares for us, around six hundred bucks of market value in Walgreens stock today. We are sitting at around forty-three dollars for our average cost. One point two one percent of the portfolio is in Walgreens today. We are down ten bucks total. We're down eighty. Not super worried. Great value proposition here in the um, in the holding that we have of Walgreens. So. I would happily buy shares of Altria right now. I'd happily buy a boatload of shares at 
uh, for Cracker Barrel currently at level at current levels, and Walgreens, and both both of uh, my other holdings being Aflac and Walgreens are both screaming buys to me right now. But currently, the best value proposition that I can see with the most potential upside, of course, is Cracker Barrel. So any money that I add from my paychecks or my commission, as long as Cracker Barrel stays below that like hundred dollar range, I'm going to be adding to that, even if it doesn't make sense. So even if it, let's say, next month comes by and it's it's eight it's uh. Aflax month, right? I'm still going to put the money in Cracker Barrel if that's the position I see as being the best value. So sometimes it's, it's good to have rules like that where you, you know, you increase your money every single month. But if there's a glaring deal and it's for a different month, if so, like I said, if Cracker Barrel, so Cracker Barrel goes up to 105 next week, I won't be putting money into it and I'll switch back to AT&T. But if, and that way I'd either put it into AT&T, back to AT&T, or I would put it into, um, Altria or Walgreens, whatever's the best value at that point. But as long as Cracker Barrel stays below 100 bucks, I'm going to be putting more money into it. So that's the change that I made into the portfolio. Let me know what you guys think down below. Also, we do have a few stocks on our watch list. So let's take a look. We've got Pepsi sitting at 170. I would want to get it to about 150. Then Procter & Gamble, company's products I use every single day, sitting at 146. I'd want to get it closer to 135. So about $10 discrepancy there. Then T. Rose at 116, and I would definitely buy it at this price. So there's no fluctuation needed for T. Rowe. It is an amazing dividend payer, and I would gladly take advantage once that month rolls around. So right now, I would. it's a glaring value to me, but I think I'd split 50-50 between Walgreens and T. Rowe price. Uh, just depending on the value that I see. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Of course, we also have Berkshire. Um, and they've got Geico, Dairy Queen, CS Candy, just a bunch of plethora of businesses. And I love them and I will be adding them. And the cool thing is, guys, I this month could add them with just dividends. So that's awesome. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel, That Dividend Guy. I appreciate all the... Uh, all the positive comments I've been getting, all the feedback. I love, love, love it. Keep that coming, guys. I'm going to have another video coming out for you tomorrow. I'm just super pumped about the deal that I found in the market. This is why it's important to always, um, you know, scour the market for stocks, for deals. And if you find them, don't be afraid to take advantage. Uh, I'm excited to see what the Cracker Barrel um, deal will do and see what kind of returns we can get. Hopefully, we get something close to Avi, and I will, I will just sit and collect that, that nice $1.30 dividend as I wait. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like uh, button on the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another Robinhood uh, portfolio update. Take care, guys.